The strategic location of Persian Gulf makes the maritime borders important in terms of security, economy, and history, and the islands located there play a key role in controlling the Strait of Hormuz. The length of Iran's southern coastline is 4,900 kilometers, which is actually the longest coastline along the Persian Gulf. But according to World Bank statistics, Iran has the second least GDP after Iraq, and its main source of revenue is sales of crude oil, which besides harming nature, consumes the wealth of coming generations. The one-dimensional economy has caused the Doge disease. Of course, due to the water shortage in the central Iranian plateau, the policies generally aim to direct the inhabitants along the southern coastlines. Therefore, Boucher and Hormuz Gun have the highest growth rate in the country, but their physical development is based on the neighboring countries. Tourism is the second most lucrative industry in the world after automotive industry, and the southern countries of Persian Gulf have heavily invested in tourism as well. For example, the UAE will be increasing the investments in Dubai city up to 74.5 billion dirhams until 2027. Development of tourism along the borders as well as economic growth strengthen the security of borders. According to the strategic document for the special planning of Hormuz Gun, the province is planned to be developed as a tourist destination. The development vision plan of Hormuz Gun province assigns to the islands the role of tourism for the 2036 horizon. Hormuz Gun has 14 islands and Hormuz is one of the eight inhabited islands. It is not possible for tourists to stay in the uninhabited local islands due to military and environmental restrictions. On July 9, 2014, the law for annexing Hormuz Island to the free trade zone of Qashm was passed in the Iranian parliament with 148 votes for and 61 votes against. The opponents say the island is a military and security site. The proponents believe in development of tourism and commodity exchange. The environmental issues on the island are not discussed. The total area of the Hormoz Island is 42 square kilometers and 7% of it is covered by urban fabric. It has a population of 6,500 people who are all Muslims equally consisting of Shias and Sunnis. Women in Hormuz wear their traditional costumes and are permitted in official organizations with their local clothing. Music is an inseparable part of life in this district, which is present in feasts and mourning, work and healing. Economic instability has led to an increase in trafficking, illegal fishing, illegal drug trade and prostitution. Construction falls short of usual standards in Hormuz. The buildings there are mostly constructed by low cement blocks and without a structural skeleton and applying basic principles. If the owner happens to have more possibilities, they would tile the exterior. The coast of Hormuz Island have various geological structures and in some parts mangrove forests and coral reefs are the habitat of green and hawksbill sea turtles, chinkaras and rabbits. Colored soil is another valuable natural resource in Hormuz Island. The island's prominent plant species is currently Prosopis juliflora, which is an allergenic plant whose roots prevent other plants from growing. By catching, fetching turtles' eggs, hunting chinkaras, extracting colored soil and trash disposal mismanagements are among the problems of the island. Hormuz is dealing with shortage of drinking water and three desalination plants are only able to meet half of the population's need. Of course, the governor promised the local people on the 30th of September 2020 to provide new equipment by the following six months. As already mentioned, according to the strategic document for the special planning of Hormuz Gun passed by the parliament, the role of tourism has been assigned to the province as an issue related to security and development. Travelers come to Hormuz either by ferry and through the port or unofficially by boat. According to statistics released by the Port and Maritime Organization of Iran, the visit to Hormuz have been increasing at the rate of 40% per year. 
In 2019, 1 million trips have been registered in the Port of Hormuz, and 80% of them were non-local people. It means around 400,000 visitors per year and 1,095 visitors per day. The number of visitors increases during the cooler month. For example, 9,000 visitors entered the island on March 23, 2019. Nevertheless, the island only has one hotel with 14 rooms, a motel with four suites and five rooms, and other 15 hostels all belonging to non-local people. There are also some 40 families who let their houses out in high seasons. Altogether, it has the capacity of 250 accommodations, and the rest of visitors must either camp in Hormuz or take a one-day tour to the island. Cultural tourists, families, children, and elderly people hardly have the possibility to stay in the island. It is important to create hospitality amenities in line with the principles of geotourism considering a diverse range of tourists and their length of stay in an island where half of the population live off tourism and their income does not come from accommodation. There are only 300 local trucks transport the visitors. According to the facilities mentioned, the island is currently a destination for backpackers. Backpackers mostly do not harm the local community, but a backpacker spends one twentieth of an average tourist. Presence in Hormoz is a tourism project aiming to define the quality of tourist presence through a profitable relation with the community. Majara is the residential part of the project, Rung is the center of interaction, and Badban is a training, monitoring, and managerial center. The project managers who came to a general agreement with the governorship of Hormuzgan in 2015 believe that presence in different spots of the island with a clear scenario would be more constructive. Therefore, Zab architects, having a remarkable record for cultural and social projects, were selected as the project consultant. Initial studies indicated that social and environmental issues on the island are so sensitive that tourism could be either harmful or helpful. So voluntarily, the CBD guidelines in biodiversity and tourism developments were considered as the touchstone and design decisions were made based on the guidelines of IUCN for sustainable tourism. The anthropological and ethnographic studies have been done using collective observation method and in depth interviews. In this method, the daily life of people is observed and then analyzed. Individuals with their unique characters and emotions become the subject of the study and are not reduced to numbers and figures. There was a time when local people were only involved in unofficial trading across borders. It was entirely seized words they had not received training to go for other jobs, so their satisfaction rate dropped. Moreover, Outsiders have often entered the island for their own profit. For this reason, local people didn't trust them and called them sahadi, meaning non-locals. In such situations, the construction method was studied as a capacity for teaching skill, which resulted in choosing super adobe, having a simple construct as the basis for construction technique so as to win the local people's trust and support through teaching them skills and making a profitable relation. Super Adobe was developed by an Iranian architect, Nader Khalili, who is the founder of Kalarth organization, in which the fabric bags are used to form a part of or the whole space. In order to create a landscape in harmony with the skyline, the crests were slightly modified compared to the existing guideline to have bigger domes with lower height. In 2017, a project called Rong was built with exactly the same method as a prototype. The details were implemented in line with the Cal Earth guidelines. Rong is a public space for the interaction of local people with visitors. As already mentioned, the coast of project location is composed of sand and gravel and is not considered as protected area or habitat for special species. In the documents of Land Affair Organization of Agricultural Jihad of Khesh, the location of the project is categorized as a rock mass and in terms of vegetation, it's considered very weak. 
The total area of the project location is approximately 10,000 square meters, which is roughly 125 millionth of the island's area. The total area of the project is around 4,000 square meters, which is less than 110,000th of the total island area. According to the law, the setback distance from the coast of Persian Gulf is 60 meters and it is 100 meters from the roads. The Majara project keeps a distance of at least 71 meters from the coast and 130 meters from the road. There are no gates and fences in Majara, which makes it accessible from the outside and it does not block access to the sea. The local people are allowed to use the public areas of the complex. 59% of the complex is open space and 22% of it is dedicated to green space. The geographical landscape lines, land features, and the skylight of the island were analyzed and the project was designed in harmony with the result. The spaces scattered on surface have created a texture and the earth in between is maintained. The foundations were built according to the method of super adobe in parallel lines of the ground, which can be removed if required. Due to the importance of natural resources of Hormuz, the different types of soil or any other natural resources were not used in the project. Soil was completely removed from the combination of materials in super adobe and was replaced by sand, a part of which was provided by the poor dredging sands. Nader Khalili states in his book, as the proportion of clay reduces, another adhesive material like cement or asphalt must be increased. According to references, the amount of cement is 15%. In Majara, the cement proportion was 10%. In the structure, 7,750 cement bags were used and 2,400 cement bags were used in plastering the project which totally makes 2.5 cement bags per square meter, while in an average building with cement blocks and faucet around 5.4 cement bags are used per square meter. The average height of Majara's space is 455 centimeters. It means the cement used per cubic meter in Majara equals 0.55 cement bag. This amount for an average building is 1.8 cement bag per cubic meter, which is three times more. Majara has 200 domes and 77 of them have height above 3.5 meters with steel structure in order to diversify the skyline of the project in harmony with the surrounding natural landscape. For this purpose, an amount of 331,000 kilograms of steel or 8.3 kilograms per square meter were used. In an average building with concrete structure, around 50 kilograms of steel is used per square meter. The limited skills needed in super adobe technology makes it possible to teach skills to the unskilled local workforce so people can easily learn the method of construction. Moreover, the material diversity is decreased in this technique, which makes it easier to transport material to the project location. To build this project, four barges, which equals 8,000 tons of materials, mostly including gravel and sand, have been brought to the island. The materials cost of the project are half of an average project with similar size built with commonly used technologies. But the average daily number of workers in the project was twice as many as an average project. In this project, 38,000 workers were involved. The total construction budget of the project is 18 billion Iranian tomans. With this amount of money, you can now buy a 380 square meter luxury apartment in the Bandar Abbas coastal road. In Majara, 50 local workers were working in the project every day. They were either permanent or seasonal workers. In the process of construction, about 40 workers became skilled, super adobe masters, sandbag tailors, masons, blacksmiths, bobcat drivers, shotcrete machine operators, and house painters, among others. The project size is 6 meters above the vertical distance from the high tide level and to prevent soil erosion, a soil dam is built on toward the sea. 
Majara has 17 guest suites which can host up to 84 people. The spaces like cafe and restaurants serve the public. There is also a gallery selling handicrafts which is revived with a corporation of designers. There is no bathtub in guest suites so as to develop a culture to change patterns of water consumption. Women in Iran need enclosed sunrooms next to water. To save in water consumption, the swimming pool has been reduced to a smaller tub with a capacity of 5 cubic meters. The daily amount of water consumed per room is estimated to be around 300 liters, which roughly equals the minimum water consumption in similar hotels. A plant for sewage treatment through ozonation has been installed in the site with the capacity of 20 cubic meters per day, purchased from the Kavosh of San at Lotus Company. For the treatment of the water used in kitchens, oil filtration machines have been provided with a capacity of 8 cubic meters. A composter with a daily capacity of 50 kilograms has been installed to produce organic fertilizers from food waste. In designing the landscape, invasive plants have been avoided and the local species were replaced by 512 local saplings, including Indian almond, mango, flame tree, jujube, and Indian cork tree. For the chinkaras living in the area, a number of watering holes have been made, resulting in birds and chinkaras appearing more around the site. The construction of Majara has not imposed on the island any new structures, such as airport or asphalt road, and ramifications were taken from the existing infrastructure in the vicinity and were transferred to the project through private funds. A one-inch pipe ramification provides the project's water four hours a day, with a fee four times higher than that of a residential use. An agreement is also made on installing a desalination plant. The capacity of power consumption of the project is 700 kilovolt ampere. The design was first based on power production with generators inside the site, but the governor of Hormuzgan said on a visit to the project that it would be possible to use domestic power as well. The materials used in walls are resistant to heat flow to reduce the need for air conditioning and electricity. Furthermore, the high thickness of walls reduces heat transfer from the outside as well. Colors are the key elements forming the identity of Hormoz. Therefore, they are applied in the development of the project architecture. But in coloring, synthetic colors were used and natural resources were avoided. With the official opening of Majara Residency, 50 job opportunities will be created directly. Among these people, 17 have already been trained and officially hired in Bodbon Center. Other divisions are supposed to be managed with the cooperation of local people. Bodbon Center is supposed to continuously do research on the impact of tourists on the local community and train local workforce for tourism-related business. The local people and tourists are planned to foster the culture of protecting the biodiversity in the island and the center will offer educational meetings with brochures, give instruction to the trained tourist guides, and issue certificates in tourism administration. To attract tourists towards environmental activities, a series of events are organized. The tourists in Rome Center will be provided with a map of vacation rentals in Hormoz as well. Very much so, hey, the 
Mama, 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 Mama,